Okay, salvation after I got saved. As I said, I had not had a Bible yet. I got into the trick track, so I was working for security. And I was working, of all places, I was working for a home for boys. Boys who were in trouble with the law, in trouble with their family. And you don't realize what God does in your life till later on. Here I would be going into the prison ministry rather than prison. And there were a lot of things I were to watch out for and to to learn by what I was supposed to stop these boys from doing. So as I'm sitting in this office, I go there was a bookshelf in the next room. I walked in there and there's a Bible. Good news for man. I opened it up and had nice little stick pictures in it. I said, oh, that's good. So I stole it. Imagine me. The first Bible I had, when I, I preach against modern Bibles. The first one I had was a good news for man with pretty little pictures. Well, I thank God. I don't know how it completely started, but... I became a King James Bible believing man and threw that in the garbage. I was given another time a little green Bible you could put in your pocket. And I took that to the electric boat and I was reading that. I'd read it when I was in the potty, read it when I was at one. And it didn't sound right. It didn't sound what the, what the preacher was reading and preaching about. Well, come to find out later on, that was an NIV Bible. I had a King James Bible, but I also was, when I was reading on the streets or reading my own private, you know, the little pocket NIV Bible. Isn't that interesting? So those people were handing out perverted Bibles even in 1988. And you don't need to know what I'm talking about, but I know what I'm talking about. Okay, so... I started going to this church, and I met my first wife who died of cancer. She was lost. I was saved. Sinning, by the way. You like that. It's all under the blood. So what do I do? Pastor, here's this woman, here's this person, she needs to be saved. Deal with it. So the pastor sat her down and talked to her. She received Christ as her Savior. How come I didn't do it? I know I know where I left off last time in the last video. The pastor came to me saying, let's go to visitation. I was like, okay. In the last video I told you. What I told was what to do, I did. So the pastor says, let's go to visitation. I said, okay, let's go. So I go with the pastor. He had his Bible. We walked up to this house. I believe I know who the guy was, but I, I can't be sure. We walk in. I see the. I remember the pastor putting the Bible down on the television, and we began to listen to Bob Dylan. That's right. Other times, this preacher would go to my uncle's house, and they would listen to other rock music. So, getting back to Lisa, we were meeting with the pastor about marriage, eventually. And he came up to us one time, he says, i got to talk to you two. We weren't married. He said, I'm not going to marry you. Now, everybody knew that we were living in sin. I was like, oh boy, here we go. I said, why not? He says, you guys don't come to the fellowships. What's the big sin in fellowship? We came for church. Now, this church would have fellowship Sunday afternoon and no Sunday service to follow. Go home and rest your big fat belly. We weren't going to be married because we didn't go to fellowships, not because of the sin we were living in. So... November 2nd, 1991, I, I, we were married. 
Soon after that, the Lord called me to preach. I went up to the pastor. This is why I don't go to pastors today. I went up to the pastor and said, Pastor, the Lord's calling me to preach. And there were words said. Why, I don't know. But we went to, uh, not, we went to church Sunday night. That's not the why, I don't know. We went to church Sunday night. And why, I don't know. That's where that belongs. Pastor says, we got a young man in this congregation who's being called to preach. And we're going to send him to college. Whoa. Me? College? Brother Joe Whitmore, will you stand up so the, so the church... And Lisa turns to me and she says, it was you. It was you. So we got out of that church right away. Something wasn't kosher. By the way, that church today is rock music. Fellowships have become parties. And it's destroyed. You know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to give names. I've seen your website. You have more Harleys around your church than what we just had at the Bikers Fest. So we go to this other church. King James. A man that, a preacher that told me, never going to change, going to stay right. Okay? Well, we left this church because I'm being called to preach and the pastor, I, I explained to him. And there were classes being held up in Plainville, Connecticut, which the pastor would take me up to eventually. And that's where I got introduced to Dr. Ruckman. Hey, everybody's wrong. Everybody's a sinner. I didn't finish the classes there only because of gas money I was unable to go and they really didn't have a full, the classes really didn't last long anyway so we sat in that church for a while and one day while, while we're in the church services this family had come up from somewhere this is where you get the clicks I didn't know about clicks I didn't know nothing. Just what I was preached. And the pastor got up at the end of the service. We like to vote these people in as, as members of the church. And that family stood up. I raised my hand. Everybody else was doing it. That pastor from the pulpit said, You are not a member of this church. We left. We did not come back Sunday night. We weren't members of the church. I, that's what I, was I didn't know what membership was. So I went and got a hold of Dr. Ruckman. All his tapes, I've got them right here. I can see him. I got all of his books. I went into my own personal Bible study, my own personal uh, college. I got the Bibles up there of all the notes. Well, right around the time, just before Henry was born, we went back to that church. I thought in my head, I went to Lisa, I said, you know, we need to go back to that church. She said, I've been thinking the same thing. I would go back. I told the pastor why we left. Now, he said, oh, you guys fell off the earth. You never came to us? You never. I said, the reason why we left is because you told us how to vote. We weren't members. Well, yeah, you have to be voted as members. Well, that's not what you told me. You told me that I was not a member of this church, so we left. You know, that pastor never apologized to me and my family for that. Well, anyway, we started going to that church. And thank God there was a family there before we left and a family there that was still there to the Holtz. I'll name them. They are missionaries in Sierra Leone. Danielle used to take care of little Henry. And we stuck to them. But there wasn't something right with the church. For whatever reason, I missed the prison ministry first. I forgot what it was. But then, then it came up time that there was a, the prison ministry came back up. And I went to Brother Joe Gonzalez. 
He was involved in it. I said, Brother Joe, I said, I'd like to do it, but I'm afraid. He said, yeah, come on out. And what happened was when the first night, I sh after I got all the paperwork and the ID and all that, the first night I showed up, Pastor comes up. I said, what? I said, where's Joe? Joe's in the hospital. I'm here to show you the ropes. So I began the prison ministry at Corrigan CI in Uncasville or Montville, Connecticut. I was there for four, five, maybe six years. And I've seen men get, I've heard of men got saved. I've seen men get saved. I've had families come up to me who I know in the Lord say, my brother or such and such got right under your preaching. I learned that years later. I had a guy one time, I was filling gas in my car on Coleman Street, and the guy came up and says, you know who I am? I said, listen. I said, if you know who I am, you know I don't remember who you are. <laughs> and he giggled. He said, that's true. Yeah, you said that a lot. I'm like, wait a minute. He says, I'm from prison. I was in, I was in with your meetings. I just want to tell you, I want to thank you very much, and I'm trying to get my life right. So, I got involved in that. I got involved in being a Sunday school teacher for little kids, which didn't last. I mean, I couldn't tell the kids no about potty breaks. And then one time I had the whole class get up for a potty break. So, I'm not good with working with children. But then... I have got involved in a charity Baptist Institute correspondent classes, which I'm still doing today. And I felt the Lord has called me to, to pastor a church. Not now. But this man that had already been a pastor, I really didn't trust him back in mind. And I was getting to the point, you know what, I couldn't invite people to this church no more. And I heard a visiting preacher say, listen, if you can't invite anybody to your church, there's a problem. So finally I started asking people to, to pray for us. We're, we're going to step out and do something in the work of the Lord. We just don't know what it is. Well, that's when we got into the street ministry with signs and passing out gospel tracts. That would be downtown Norwich, Connecticut. And then we went to NFA. For four years, signs and passing out gospel tracts. A few street preaching, but not much. I can probably count them on my hands how many times I preached. And Henry got into the habit where he would hand everybody a track. He would never size anybody. Listen, you have a biker come up to me, and I'd size them down. Not Henry. Henry. Would even the police would even try to stop Henry, and he come up to me, and we go deal with it. Henry has been stopped by store managers several more than the fingers of my hand. Where the store manager, not the security, the store manager would come up and tell him, "You can't pass out those tracks no more." Only one was respectful to him. He said, "I like to I'd like you to do it, but." If, you, if I allow you to do it, i got to allow everybody to do it. I don't want to stop you from passing out tracks, but here. And he came, gave like a wink, wink, don't get caught. That kind of thing. So we've dealt with the police. We've dealt with the, the, the high school. We've dealt with all kinds of things in the street ministry. Meanwhile, the church that we were at had their own street ministry startup. They couldn't help us. They couldn't join with us. They started theirs on the other side of town. On the other side of the state, really. And they met in this spot, and the police stopped them. And I believe they were arrested. And come to find out the spot that they had chosen and they fought the police about was a private property spot. Now everywhere we were 
We were on public property, but the city had given the property between the hours thereof and the hours thereof when the school was in session. If the school wasn't in session, it, it was you can do whatever you want. Well, we're trying to reach the students. So we met with the police, we met with the principal, we met with the school security, and we came up with negotiable agreement where we could be. And you know what I realized after that? We entered that school in one year with a freshman. And when we finally moved to Florida, those freshmen, we were there outside the gates when they graduated. And the Lord moved us down to Florida. Okay, so what happened with this church? We were de-churched. The pastor came to prison that night, threw a whole bunch of charges at me, told me I was angry and, and all that, sent the letter to everybody. We were de-churched. I handed him the church case and said, all right, go with the security guard or the correction officer into, into, the, into the facility. I'm gone. We never went back to that church again. We tried to start a church, the Guy and Light Bible Baptist Church of Norwich, Connecticut. We had a few visitors. We had a woman that was troubled. We tried to help. That was stopped by two ways. The city came in and tried to get us for zoning and tried to get us for signage. We talked to the Christian Law Association. The city was right. Then my wife had had breast cancer, and she had died. I'm going to tell you something about tracks. After I was saved, I would mail every Christmas card, every birthday card, every card I send to people, I put a gospel track in. My mom, my dad, whatever. My mom, I would give extra tracks because I was living at her house at that time. And I'd leave them. And I remember she put them in the kitchen. They were in the kitchen drawer I saw one day. Listen, my dad has pictures of the kids holding their signs where he watches TV. And he gets a gospel track still to this day every time I send him a card. Tracks don't work, I heard a guy say the other day. Well, let me tell you something. My wife was in the hospital with breast cancer. It was emotional time. And calling my mom as I did, I found out I didn't didn't hear. My mom told me she got saved. She was going to a church. She was saved. I was like, I didn't hear it. And Lisa had gotten worse. And it was September. I called up my mom. And I was just crying the blues. And she started talking Bible to me. And say, you know, you got to have faith in Jesus. He'll get you. I'm like, Mom, stop. Stop. I called you last month. You told me you got saved. She goes, yeah. I said, you and I are having a Bible conversation about Jesus right now. She goes, yeah. I said, Mom, you got saved. She goes, yeah. And it finally dawned on me. That my mom had received Christ as her Savior. And I went back and told Lisa, I said, You're not going to believe this. And my mom had some issues with the, with, with the baptism. I forgot what it was. I know Lisa said from the hospital she would pray about it. She wanted to know. And finally, there was a Saturday that my mom was baptized. I got pictures. And I know that Lisa was happy. And the following week, Lisa went on to be home with the Lord, with all of us there. And I tried to still have the church services and the conditions where I were, was at and the conditions of the person I was at, it wasn't going to work. Satan had filled the room. So I went and found this other church. Oh, my God, wow. This church was perfect for the person I was at. It was not for us. I fought with them every step of the way. On Bible stances and all that. And they're, they're just like the churches are down here. Wicked and wrong. 
And then uh, I've been going coming down to Florida. The first time we came down to Florida was October of uh, well, 2000 something. I don't know years. Lord knows. We came down for Bikers Week to another church. I'll get into maybe or maybe not. So we came down here for Bikers Week and we enjoyed it. But already the church that we were at was not what they said we were. You know, come on down with the sign ministry and we'll help you out. They didn't. Just one day they did. So we went back and we came back another time. We went down by plane first. We came down, we drove down secondly. It's for the same church. Actually, they didn't help us the first time with the signs. There was no sign ministry the first time we came down, even though there was supposed to be. The second time we came down for the next bikers, which is March or May, and the church was only out there one afternoon with us, but we had made our decision we're going to come move down to Florida. So... I'm sitting at my computer, I'm on Facebook, and I get this woman and say, you need help packing and watch the kids. Now, I had gone to school with Tracy. I had met her at shop class where she wanted to be a nurse, and I wanted to be a, a plumber, or a pipe fitter, at least. We both got the shop we did not want ended up together. That's the Lord working. So here she is, she, she texts me and scared the, the, the poopy out of me. I'm like, what? what? No, I, don't, I think I said no, or I didn't answer. Kind of freaked me out. I mean, we're packing a move. We're heading down to Florida. We're coming. And we got talking or texting, whatever you call it, and... Now, I had prayed for a wife. And people were angry with me. But I had two children. I had Christians break their friendship with me because I wanted to get married so quick. Well, anyway, Tracy was writing some things. I said, you know, I texted her. I said, you need a hug? She said, yeah. So we met in an open spot, even had a police escort. Keep it clean. And I drove home from that meeting. And we were together a long time that night. We were talking and we were just good old friends. And I didn't I didn't have to say, Lord, is this the woman? Or oh, Lord, I need a wife. I knew for sure. Now, I've heard preachers say this. That's the woman I'm going to marry. And I thought, yeah, right. Don't ever do that in your walk, your Christian walk. Because God's going to bring that in your own life. And I got a hold of Tracy. I said, you know what? I said, we're going to get married. I, said, I don't remember exactly how. And there were some issues there. And because of those issues, the church that we were at didn't want us there. So they're ashamed. So we went to another church, visited off and on. Then we went visiting churches to see what they were like. Woo wee, that was an experience. We were in a church one time, I'm not going to give the name, but the guy before the church service offered to sell tickets to anybody who wanted to come to a cake party. You can ask my wife. They had another Bible, which you could hear me slam my Bible, my son said, through the whole thing. If there weren't people sitting in that pew, if we could escape, we were left, like Lot and his family. So we were married, we came down to Florida. When we came down to Florida, let me say there was no teaching position for me. There was no evangelistic work for me. There was supposed to be. There was supposed to be a sign ministry which was turned over to the sun. I've already done the sign ministry for four years. I heard this guy out of the pulpit say he took his Ruckman books, his, his Knox books, and other books, and threw them in a the garbage can. You're going to do what I tell you to do. 
That's the first church. And I tell you, the first church I was in, that the that preacher would get up there and call old smutty face Satan and all that, would say, if you're not happy with this church, you can go to the church treasure and get all your money back and you can leave. Well, for whoever or whatever, DCF was called about my children. Great people in the Lord. So we left. We ain't forced out a lot of churches. I mean, what would you think? And right now, even in my life where the Lord has brought us back, I'm saying, Lord, where did I sin so I can confess it? And so far, there's some things I have confessed that are sin, and there are some things the Lord brought. You didn't do a thing. But had you stayed, I didn't stay. So we went to another church. Oh, by the people in that church, we were lied to, deceived, corrupted. My daughter would, 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 would come home with the, with the Bible being perverted and changed the words. Verily, verily meant truly, truly. You know, you send your kid off to, to the things and they get, they get more playtime, more singing time, more food than they do Bible. And when we left that church, the, the invasions of the modern Bibles were coming in to the, to the teaching. And the Christian bumper stickers and the sign ministry that we have downtown was illegal to them. It was wrong. Offensive. But what they did was right. What did they do? Nothing. They had letters they send out to people, and they had to practically auction off the packet to get people to do that. So, where do I stand today? I am a King James Bible believing Christian. I don't prefer the King James, it is the necessary. If I can even say according to John chapter 1, let me go there. John chapter 1 verse 1, I'm going to say it's Jesus Christ. I don't think I'm going to, to have to pay for that sin because it's not a sin. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It didn't say words, it said Word. So from the time I, I've gotten saved, this is the first few scriptures that I remember I would quote. Jeremiah 10, 24. O Lord, correct me, but with judgment, not in thy anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. And then Nehemiah 4, 18. For the builders, every one had a sword girded by his side, so builded, and he that sounded the trumpet was by me. Those were the first scriptures, not John 1.1. 1, 1. Nehemiah and Jeremiah were the first scriptures I, I've ever learned. And the Lord has given me the sword to use and to be by the trumpet as I wait for the Lord to call me home. Now I have had in my time I corrected my grandma with a lot of hard work for her living Bible. That was hard work to get her out of her living Bible into a King James Bible. My children are saved and know the Lord. My wife who is in heaven shows that she was saved. My wife Tracy is saved. There's a man in prison, John, who received the Lord as his Savior. He's in my Bible to pray for. I am not bragging now. May the Lord not take my crowns away, but I do support missionaries. I give my 10% to the church. That's not bragging. That's what God wants. And then I give more. I'm not going to tell you more. And I support 
three missionaries. One is the Fellowship Track League, which is a missionary all the world. Since Rachel has been knee high to a grasshopper, she has stood on a street corner with a sign and passing out gospel tracts. She don't stand on the street corner as a hussy or with a beer can or with a cigarette. And I've had many parents, I've had many people tell me that it's offensive to see my girl hold a Bible sign. And my reaction to that, would you rather her hold a cigarette? Would you rather have her have a bump and not know who the father is? Train up a child in a way. I have been in a lot of churches. Some I've been members, some I weren't members. I have been asked to leave two churches. I've heard some boring preachers. I've heard some great preachers. I've heard some devilish preachers. I know personally, and, and he holds Henry of great admiration, Brother James Locke, that we visit his church as often as we can. I know personally a brother bear in Las Vegas who street preaches on the strip or whatever that main road is. And I pray for a personal police officer that gives him a hard time that he would love to see saved and turn and witness with other people as he has tried to stop brother bear. I have met, I have shaken hands, I have talked to Sam Gipp. I have never met in person Brother or Pastor Brookman. I am going to stand on the Bible and what the Bible says, and I have had many people leave my presence. And that's Scripture. I have had family angry with me because of my stand. I told you about a Brother Joe. Uh, no, Brother Joe. Uncle Joe, Roman Catholic. I wrote everybody in the family about Jesus. And my grandfather caught the heck for it, for me doing that. I've had Christians walk away from me. Because I'm not going to walk their worldly ways. Family. Because I wrote against an editorial of their preacher and their fundamentals, I mean F-U-N, big capital letters, and playtime over the gospel. Listen, my, I'm sad to say my grandfather and I broke our fellowship together over two things. I love my grandpa dearly. Number one, because I had on my phone... A salvation message for anybody who called my phone. He thought that was too much. I told him, you don't need to call my number. If you don't like the message on my phone, you don't need to call. <clears throat> number two, he got perverted. And some Bible perverted preachers who are on the radios today. That we are going to need to eat the tree of life. The fruits or the leaves thereof. And we batted heads with that. We finally came to the end of the conclusion there where when he died, that was it. We didn't see each other. I've had battles. I've had troubles. I had problems. I all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Listen, when people come up to me on the streets and all that, and it's nothing new. You're not going to go, I love Satan, and I'm going to go run the other way. <laughs> that ain't nothing. It's amazing that I, God has given me what he has given me, that I have made the Bible real in my life. I have lived. The apostles, I have lived the footsteps of Jesus Christ. And I'm not going to quit.
God is with me. God is speaking with me. God talks to me. Have you seen these videos? They're working lives. I never done it myself. Uh, I know. I, I'm, I saw me flipping around the papers. You want to talk about a wicked of sinners? I am. Paul said he was a chief of sinners. I'm the wickedest of sinners. In April 1987, I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. And there was a time before I met Lisa. I forgot to tell you, I was out of church. And during that time, I went back to the booze. Went back to the rock. Got mixed in with poor company, my family. My family drove me away from God. At that time now, I'm smoking marijuana. I wasn't doing, but with the car windows rolled up, I guess you could say I was doing crack. I was on the streets in the process, maybe didn't hold the money, didn't hold the bag, of buying drugs. We had places where you would go to bands. You would play those bands. I remember being in a, in a hotel room with that band thinking if the cops were here, I'm in jail. Even though all I had was my Bacardi. I'm a saved Christian. And by the way, those old sins were coming back. I told you I didn't want to mention. They were back in my life. Along with the booze, along with the smoking, along with now doing drugs and getting in trouble with the law again. I had no, I'm not gonna say it. Well, let me tell you let me tell you what happened as a born again saved Christian. In Salem, Connecticut, there's Gardner's Lake. And my cousins and I went there to go swimming. And they got the area rope off with buoys, and they had it in the middle of it. They had this, this, this platform you can lay on, you can dive, and do whatever you want to do. And that platform is anchored. Let me get that down. For I have an anchor, steadfast and sure. I swam all the way up to the buoys and turned around. And started swimming back. I began to drown. I went under the water. And I, I, I thought that was it. And as you swim, you know, you put your hands out. I put my hand out to swim and I touched something. I was drowning. I was behind that platform where the, the lifeguards would not have seen me. I would have been in the newspaper, man drowns and haven't found the body yet. In my booze. In the drugs. Involved with sex. I would have died and gone to heaven and been crownless as I preach today so don't tell me I'm full of it I know what I'm talking about because I almost became one of those useless worthless fruitless Christians who used to do who used to be I was one of them Well, as I reached out, I grabbed something. I grabbed a hold of it. And it was the ladder to that wooden platform. And I laid on that platform and, oh. I would like to say I got right, right then and there, but I didn't. It was a little, long, a little while longer. But I started to get right in my sin. 
And there's a young man. I'll mention his first name, and I'd be happy and I'd give him the credit, Darren. We worked at an electric boat. We built submarines together. I'd pick him up, and I'd put in my CD Christian music when he got in the car. Before he got in the car, I'd pop into Christian music. But what would you listen to before that? Whatever I wanted to. But as a testimony, as a worldly Christian, I still saw the soul of Darren and wanted to get saved. saved. And he even had the nerve one time to tell me, you know, I'm not going to ride in your car if you're going to play that music. Well, it's my car. You don't have a say. Either you walk, take the bus, or you got to go in my car. You got to watch what you say. Because God's going to come back. So we would drink before we go into EB. And there was a bar outside of EB. I go in there and have a beer and play pool. I remember one afternoon, I remember Darren, we're shooting up. He looks at me, he says, Christian? I said, yeah. What? You play those things in the car and all that. I'm going to end with this. Well, yeah. Should you be drinking that beer and shooting that ball? That's when I got right with the Lord. So don't come to me and tell me, oh, you ought to be doing this. You shouldn't be doing this. Listen, I've lived a life. I lived an unsaved life. Go, would have gone to hell. Christ saved me in April 1987. I lived for the Lord. I stepped out on the Lord. I lived for self. The Lord dealt with me, dealt with my heart, got me right. I am actively serving in the ministry. My children, my family are doing right. By my family, I mean my wife and my children. My other family, they don't want to serve God. Then they can keep walking the way they're doing because I'm not going to walk their worldly way. I've been there. God has given me a file cabinet of experience to tell you what not to do and what to do because I've done it. I can't just say, oh, give advice that I've never done. Listen, I can't tell you how to how to build a building, I don't know that. But I can tell you how to live for God. I can tell you what God expects from you. I can tell you the word of God, what God shows me. And I've had people amazed on what God has done in my life. And when you preach your man from your cemetery, Seminary, I mean. Cinerary. Hey, that's a new name. Like that. Cinerary Cemetery. If you have ever, with an open coffin, your wife laying in that coffin, have to preach a message, and while you're preaching that message, people are a many. And shouting hallelujahs of what I was saying about the Lord. If there's one man in the Bible outside of Jesus Christ who can speak to all humans, it would be Job. I am where I am today, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. In my lifetime I should have died as a sinner and gone to hell before April 1987. And the age of accountability to April 1987. I was a vast sinner. After I got saved and I stepped out of the Lord, I was a wicked sinner. I should have died and by God's mercy and by God's grace, by God's faith, gone to heaven. I should not be wearing a crown or expect the city to reign. I had never expected to be here, thou good and faithful servant. 
A new name should be for me, loser. But by the grace and by the facts and by the love of God, for God so loved me that he gave his only begotten son, that if I believe on him, I should never perish, but shall have everlasting life. God has brought me back to the fold. God has taken care of me. God has shown me more. Why, I don't know. Why does God look upon me when I've done him wrong before salvation and after salvation and still love me like he does? That's why I preach the way I preach. That's the way I teach I teach. That's why I go on the streets. That's why I pass out gospel tracts. That's why I tell people about Jesus. That's why I'm against these, these churches today are for playtime. They are for snack time. They are for let's have a good time. And for programs. And not the Bible because I grew up in that mess. I never had Sunday school. I never had a church come to me. I never had a Christian witness to me until I was 18 years old. And it breaks my heart when I see a mother cup her children like a chicken cups her chicks when we try to hand them a gospel tract. That is why I preach on the street now. With a bullhorn. Oh, look at him. He preaches a bullhorn. Thinks he's... No. Because the mother won't let her child hold that track. Because the father won't let the daughter take that track. Because you'll go walking by without taking a track. Or you'll take the track and throw it in the garbage. But if I say, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. That goes into your heart. You can't turn me off unless you put headphones in. I do what I do because I know there's lost people out there like I was. And no one tried to help me. But by the grace of God. I do what I do for Christians because I went astray. No one came to show me what I was doing wrong. I got more battered by preachers than an egg in a battering machine. I don't want you to go that route. I don't want you. The time is closed. Jesus is coming. Had Jesus come, had I died in that, that, that lake, I would be crownless. I want you to hear from God. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want you to be a productive Christian. I want you to do right. And if you don't, go do your own way then. Get out of my life and get off my wagon. My wagon is for those who want to do what God wants you to do. And you may not even know. You may not even understand. Get on. I will help you. And I never needed to push anybody off that wagon. They've gotten off themselves. I don't need to push or throw. I just stay in the word and they jump off. That's why I am who I am today. Because I was a lost sinner. I am a saved Christian. I was a worldly wicked sinner in Christ and now I serve the Lord because I'm going to read it again for by grace am I saved through faith faith that God gave me and that not of me or myself is the gift of God you know when I relied on myself is when I stepped out on God and made a mess of my life not of works, nothing I can do. I don't preach on the street to be saved. I preach on the street, I pass out gospel tracts because God loved me. God has loved me. God is loving me. God will love me. That's why I preach. That's why I teach. That's why I give these Bible studies. That's why I sit every night with my family with the Bible. At least any man should boast. At least I should boast. I'm not going to boast. No sense in boasting. It's nothing I've done. It's all by the grace of God have I been saved. Have I done for God. It's only by me have I failed. 
where I fail is, is me. Me, myself, and I. It's never God. It's the righteousness of God that he has long suffering. And this has been my testimony. As someone has asked you for me to do. I hope you know where I'm coming from now. I hope you know where to stand. I stand. And you contact me if you like. Um, I didn't I only wrote down a few notes. I may have missed a lot of things. But that's my story. How Christ saved me. I'm trying not to imitate nobody but Christ. And I am a sinner. I have failed God many times. I put it under the blood and keep walking. And this date of October 23rd, 2013, this would be my last word. And I'll close right now with my last word. God is faithful.